I absolutely love that when I create, I am finding a little piece of myself more and more every time I do it. Hi, I'm Monique Kara. Welcome to the You Are a Work of Art podcast, where we lean into heart-centered creativity as an essential part of building our capacity for joy. Joy isn't just an emotion we feel, it's a reservoir of strength that enriches our brightest moments and carries us through our darkest ones. That's where I come in. If we haven't met yet, I'm a full-time working mom of two boys, an entrepreneur, and a fine artist. I learned how to create in the margins of life. I get it, we're all busy, but friend, creativity isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. It is central to our purpose, our joy, and our legacy. Together, we'll explore practical tools to purposely nurture our creativity. Through the ups and downs, setbacks and breakthroughs, struggles and delights, it's all part of the process, and it's a journey you don't have to figure out alone. So grab your headphones and get ready to venture into your most joyful, creative life. This is You Are a Work of Art. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited about this week's episode because I have my very first guest on the show. I cannot wait to share this interview with Miss Julia Whitworth. She is an abstract and landscape fine artist living in Chattanooga, Tennessee. She became infatuated with her art practice when she returned to painting in 2021 after the height of COVID-19. Her ethereal works are remarkable for how they reflect the outside world, bringing wonder, nostalgia, and peace to any home. Drawing inspiration from the world outside and the music that moves her, she aspires to tell a story with color. Seeking to bridge the gap between melodic and visual, she translates moments in time where emotions are felt but not always tangible. How beautiful is that? If you haven't checked her out, please do so. I will have all of her social links in the show notes for this episode, and that can be found at moniquecara.com forward slash show notes forward slash episode 002. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hi, Julia. Welcome to the You Are Work of Art podcast. I'm so excited to be talking with you today. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Yes. So just for everyone's awareness, Julia and I meet every single week and we can talk for like three hours. So we're going to try to not make it that long. <laughs> do that to you. We've got the uh, cliff notes from those meetings. <laughs> yes. So Julia, we talk about creativity all the time. How did you find your creativity or how did creativity come into your life? I think it's always been a constant over time, but I didn't realize how much I needed it until I went without it. You know, the hustle and bustle of corporate life the last several years just kind of took over and I decided to pick up the paintbrush again and put it to canvas not too long ago. And the change in me over the last year has just been enormous, uh, enormous growth, I guess is what I would call it. Because just as soon as I let go and, and was just trying to find myself and my sanity on to not only like journaling, but sketching and then paintbrush to canvas. I mean, it I've grown so much and I found who I am. I found peace within myself. You know, I've had anxieties and all kinds of other things. And I just feel so, so at peace now. And I think that speaks a lot to how creativity and really letting yourself dive into something you love and truly enjoy and how to explore that changes everything for you. So that, um, I mean, that's just, like I said, a small part of it, but um, I absolutely love that when I create, I am finding a little piece of myself more and more every time I do it. Mm -hmm. And I can so relate to that because I've painted on and off my whole life and I've always had to have some creative outlet 
and then there was a year um, since both my husband are in the military, he had to leave for a year. And I was without that creativity because I was working full time. I was taking care of a tiny human (laughs) by myself and also pregnant. So it was just a really tough year. And once he got back kind of to your point, I just felt like I had lost a bit of myself. And so I started painting again and it has changed so, so much for me. So I'm glad that creativity has been such a positive thing in your life too. How did you settle on like abstract painting? Yeah, that's just part of the journey, in my opinion. I'm still discovering every day new things that I love. I started with abstract only because I, it was such a spur of the moment when I decided I needed to paint again. Um, It was New Year's Day and I was being all soapy, like like soapy. I was being (laughs) all uh, sappy because I couldn't go home to see my family because of COVID. Uh, for Christmas or Thanksgiving and New Year's and all of these holidays had passed and I was just you know what was me and my husband was like well what are we gonna do with you like what what do you want to do that'll cheer you up and I was like I think I'm gonna go paint so I had this huge canvas I mean it 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 is huge it's it's in our living uh, bedroom now but huge canvas that I'd been saving from years to years. Like I'd kept, you know, I think I probably mm-hmm. bought it in college and just never sat down to do it. And so I finally whipped that out and just started painting. Like, I mean, color on canvas. I um, was just kind of, it was actually like really dark colors because I guess that's how I was feeling. Like it was dark greens and, you know, all of these just emotions onto Mm -hmm. canvas it was it was wild like at first it was supposed to be just this fun little thing that I did but when I stepped back I was taken aback I I literally was like wow that's how I feel (laughs) that's how I feel right now and so that was just a click for me that's kind of what brought me back into all of it and I could not be more excited too because after that my birthday was a month later and so my husband and my parents all pitched in to give me some canvases and paintbrushes and paints (laughs) and so I sat down and I painted that day and I put it online and I was like look what I did and somebody reached out in like 20 minutes was like I'll buy that (laughs) what that's awesome that is so great that was so, not anyone but me, but that's the joy of, you know, it's like such full circle that it'll make other people just as happy as it made me. Mm-hmm. Make yes. It. Oh my goodness. You are speaking my language right now, but I wanted to circle back to two things. So the first one is like the colors you chose and the feelings you had. Do you find that as you do different collections, it kind of represents what you're feeling in that season of life or do you try to have like different themes and are trying to achieve like a specific objective yeah I think right now you know this journey is changing for me so much but right now I'd say yes it's changing by what I'm feeling in that moment or what I've experienced in the last couple weeks what I'm listening to, what I'm watching. It's like, that's how, that is what art is to me, is like Mm -hmm. a moment in time for me, at least for my original collections. I have lots of commissions work too. That's like, and how I do that is the same way. I'm like, what do you want this emotion to be? Like, Mm -hmm. tell me about you and tell me about your story. I want to know about them so that I can put that into their painting. So that's really the best way for me to express myself as an artist, I think, is because I'm taking on these emotions and trying to, you know, communicate that through color choice or a feel, a certain feel. This episode was sponsored by my fine art, Monique Kara Studio. Art is an expression of who you are. Whether it's your home or office, art is what makes it yours. My paintings are bursting with color, literally. Color influences not only your mood, but behavior as well, making it likely one of the most important things to consider when adding it to your space. 
Inspired by feelings and emotions, my intriguing color palettes merge joy and calmness, as well as excitement and inspiration. Whether you're looking for a large statement piece or a small burst of color, my paintings are sure to lift your spirits. Shop available art at MoniqueCaraStudio.com and use code WORKOFART at checkout for a special free gift just for being a listener of the podcast. I'm so grateful you're here and I can't wait to brighten your space. Now let's get back to the episode. So if anybody looks up Julia and Mai's art, it is completely different. (laughs) Um, Mine is typically like very bright and that hard edge abstract type of thing because I just I love color and figuring out how and why different colors work together whereas Jules is very like soft and subtle but like beautiful big washes of paint Um, and now you've been adding texture to it and it is just gorgeous so it's really funny to hear how we're so similar in that but have a completely different representation of it when it's on a canvas. But another thing I wanted to go back to is it sounds like you have so much support around you, like with your husband and um, your parents. And I know that you've said like, you'll bounce things off your mom, like sending her pictures of paintings in progress. So can you talk a little bit about how like that's been important? Yeah, definitely. I could talk about that for a while, especially, um, just my family supporting, you know, this endeavor of mine, just because now I know it's a need in my life. And I think it's always been, but I just didn't ever really put two and two together, but I'll tell you a little bit about this. My mom is so artistic and creative and, and has so many other wonderful talents too, that she just, you know, over the years growing up with her and seeing some of the incredible tasks. I mean, they could have just been like help with my homework, you know, a a school project, but she is going full force. (laughs) And it it is a beautiful work of art or like, um, I did theater growing up. And so she would do these beautiful backdrops, you know, for our stage settings Mm -hmm. and would, you know, sew costumes. And so anyways, but one of my favorite memories from, you know, my family supporting the arts and whatnot is my mom also painted a mural in our kitchen of her garden in the backyard. So I think this is a full circle moment too, because her garden at the time was her big hobby. And so she painted that as a reflection of how she was feeling on her walls. And so that's what I grew up on. You know, that that was my kitchen growing up was these, you know, this beautiful mural on the wall. And I think that taught me so much subliminally, like here I am (laughs) later, you know, resurrecting these memories of helping her paint this mural. And I'm like, I'm painting murals now, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that it's something that's always been supported and loved in the community that I have put myself in and grew up in. And so that has that has really been a great way for me to be safe and feeling like I can explore, you know, my art and what it means to me. Mm -hmm. I do think it's important to have that support around you, but I know that others don't always have a similar experience. So I think it's also great too, as you've been talking, just listening, how you have been able to find yourself in your work and it's not necessarily about the people around you, but exactly how you're feeling. So I just wanted to mention that in case like somebody is listening and it's like, well, I don't really have a support network behind me that in times where that's not the case, like it's still so important and so possible to have creativity in your life to really help you find yourself too. Yeah, I definitely would say, you know, not everyone in my family has that artistic creative bone, um, but they can still appreciate the fact that I am enjoying so much of what I'm doing. And so Mm -hmm. I think to kind of get that message across, you just have to be brave enough to, to try to Mm -hmm. put yourself out there, to experiment, to play, 
even mm-hmm. if no one sees it, do it for yourself. And right. I think that is really the spirit that it should come from anyways, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so once they see how it changes you and makes you better, like I know that it will, everyone mm-hmm. benefit from a little creativity in their life, they'll, they'll be on board, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's been really interesting on this like artist journey once I started putting things online because it took me a long time to be like you said brave enough to post my art and paintings that I was doing because it is such a art is such a vulnerable thing it's very personal and so it's like what if I put this out there and people don't like it um like how's it gonna make me feel but I find like doing things scared has been so great in this entire journey. It just, it makes me giggle to hear that, but. It is so true though. I mean, I think that just art in general is vulnerable. So putting it out for the world to see and judge, (laughs) you have to have have thick skin. Um, But I think again, I'll go back to what I said. Like if you're doing it for you, then it's kind of like, if you don't like it, then it's not for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so I, it's coming from a different place. And I think that's really where art should come from um, in a lot of ways is, you know, the exploration of a subject or a topic or for, for my case, you know, a feeling Mm-hmm. you know or a song you can't get out of your head and you just want to paint to it or you know mm-hmm. and so yeah going back to the journey piece it's been interesting to get dms from people that I either have never met or I haven't talked to in years that are just like you're such an inspiration and like keep doing what you're doing like it's bringing me life like just to see how this is changing you for the better and like seeing how joyful it makes you. And I know you've gotten DMs like that too. (laughs) We've (laughs) talked about it before. So Um, it's been very humbling mm -hmm. to not only reconnect with people who I'd lost contact with just from them being like, Hey, I see what you're doing, like way to go. And like, Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're, you know, doing things that you used to love, like people who, from my childhood who are like, oh my gosh, I remember seeing your art on the, in the school hallways. I used to love looking at your work. (laughs) What? Like, I I never thought, I never viewed myself like like that. I never maybe had the self-confidence to, to say like, I, I am this, I am an artist or I am this. I had some talents, but I never, I never thought that I could do that. You know, I never really gave myself the freedom back then to explore those, those outlets. I had so much I always wanted to do that back then, you know, social media was really just getting started. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't so much power. Like as an artist, you really couldn't get seen as much back then. And so it was always very much so frowned upon I think like oh well you won't make any money as an artist like that was always said and so um I think when I went into college I was like well what am I gonna do like I know I'm creative but like how does that help me (laughs) like okay marketing sounds good you know let me let me give this a shot and you know I excelled there too but without that missing piece of doing it for me I think that's really where I lost I lost a little piece of who, what makes me at the core. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started, you know, painting again, just, just for the sheer fact of enjoyment that I came into my own, I think. Mm -hmm. That's really true. Where do you find that you draw your inspiration from? I know you've talked about emotions, um, but is there anything else? So I draw my inspiration, not only from emotions, but also from experiences. So for example, the first experiment, like I said, I've been on this journey to try to figure out, you know, what my, my thing is in the, in the art world. And the first thing that I tried is to really, um, 
listen to music and see how that kind of can play out onto canvas. And so that's what I did for my fall collection. I listened to a series of like, oh, I don't know. I'll I'll have to put together the playlist that I listened to, but I just listened to this playlist on repeat and the type of music, the feeling, the tones that I was listening to are all over <laughs> that entire color palette, the feeling, you know, it's just really remarkable to me to see how the music could have come on to Canvas then. And so that was one experience. And then another one, I think, as far as experiences go, would have to be the most recent one I've tried, is going to places. So going on a trip and trying to capture that feeling, that essence um, while I'm there and then putting that onto canvas so what I'm painting I'm thinking about how I was feeling or I'm rereading journal entries that I wrote on the trip um I'm just I'm listening to maybe the same music that I was listening to on the trip just trying to kind of tie all of those experiences together of how I was feeling and putting that into the color palette and then just letting myself you know dive onto the canvas and so that has been a really, that's been the past year. I've, those are the three things that I've really tried as music, movies, and experiences. And of course, I love to paint outside. So that always has an effect. Mm -hmm. We could call that another experience. It's really interesting to see how lo much looser my work is when I'm outside. I'm free, you know, I don't know, something about being in the, in the elements just really makes the experience so much better for me and so I think it's interesting to see my work when I'm outside compared to inside so a lot of times I'll start it outside and then do all the detail work inside so um Ooh, yeah like that. and so you mentioned that you find your paintings are more flowy and free when you're outside whether you're outside or inside do you feel like it's more intuitive of what you're doing or is it whenever you had sketched out like studies or something in your sketchbook that you're kind of basing your paintings off of? I would say it's definitely intuitive. I think there's only so far a sketch can get me to the end result. It can be an idea, but mm -hmm. a lot of times when I'm actually actively painting, I'll find something better. I'll find a different solution I like even more. So mm -hmm. Um, a sketch is really just to get, you know, clutter out of my head. Because if I go into it and I'm like so constrained, it has to look this way, it just feels stiff to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, sometimes I'll I'll paint over what I did because I'm like, eh, it feels too perfect for me. And I like it to be a little messy. You know, I think that's that's the fun part um in my work is for it to, like we said, be a little free and flowy. Mm -hmm. So then you mentioned your favorite part, I guess, can you expand a little bit more on what that is? And then also your least favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Favorite part of painting or favorite part of just the process or your painting. Ooh. Okay. Favorite part of the painting process would probably be, I have two answers to this one. I really enjoy the beginning. I really do because mm -hmm. at least on my abstracts, I am trying to solve a problem. Like I start wild and free. A lot of times I will do huge chunks of splatter paint and then pour water on top. Mm -hmm. And then I just start to go. I just start to paint and see what comes see what I think looks interesting and then push more either more water or more paint I mix another color that whole first like base layer to me is the one of the most rewarding parts sometimes it can be the <laughs> least rewarding <laughs> because when you step back you're like oh that does not look good <laughs> mm -hmm. but for the most part if you continue to you know just act on what you see and do more of that and then step back I think that's probably the hardest part is stopping mm -hmm. at, a, at a reasonable point but that may be my favorite part 
Um, my least favorite part is knowing when to call it done. So um, that's that that can be really challenging, especially for what I do, because there's not always like a specific end result I'm looking for. You know, it can it can be one way for a couple weeks and I'm just staring at it. I'm like, is this done? Mm-hmm. I, do I love it enough to call it done? <laughs> So, um, that's, that's probably the most challenging part I'd say. Mm -hmm. Which is so interesting because like you, I think one of my favorite parts for me, it's like mixing the colors and getting that like perfect hue that I'm wanting, but then like having a blank white canvas and like the first stroke of color on there is just, it makes my heart happy. But for you, because of the way that you paint and you create, you don't necessarily have an endpoint. Whereas with mine, like, because it's that hard edge and there's boundaries in it, I know that, okay, this painting is done. And then it's, I would say at the very, very end, taking a step back, even like letting your eyes rest for a little bit and then coming back to it when, after I finished the painting is also one of my favorite parts. So I guess I have two favorite parts too, but (laughs) Oh, that is so true. Like walking away and coming back the next morning and you're like, oh, that actually looks decent. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that is such a rewarding part. Yeah. Because sometimes I'll sit down and paint for like two or three hours, which is a long time to just be staring at the same thing that you're kind of like, I don't know if these colors look good together. Do I need to redo it? But I find when I get to that point, It's just either take a picture of it and look at it from like a different view or like completely just walking away. But yeah, I think that is so important. Taking a picture sometimes just on your phone is so nice because you can actually see it through a different lens, you know, Mm -hmm. and you can even like zoom in (laughs) and, and see, you know, what's not working here, what you know, what's off or what is working, um, and then draw on it, you know, you can Mm -hmm. like make marks and to see where you could go next. I do that a lot, um, Mm -hmm. before I actually go onto canvas, especially after that base layer is done, Mm -hmm. then it's, then the real work begins. I'm like, all right, how do I get this to the finish point? You know? So kind of getting to the end here, what piece are you most proud of? Oh man, I have to say there's two that really stick out, maybe three. That's very hard. That's like choosing your favorite (laughs) child. What are you trying to do to me? (laughs) No, um, I do have one specific one in mind that I'm thinking of. It was one of the first times I had a client who said, do whatever. Yes, do whatever. I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Do whatever you want. And I was like, are you sure? Like, you're really going to trust me to do this? Because <laughs> before mm-hmm. it all had always been, you know, what colors do you want? What does your house look like? You know, I'm trying to figure out who they are, or maybe I already knew who they were. But for this client, he was like, here is my apartment. It's great lighting. It's blank do what you want. I was like, okay. So that was a very, very freeing experience because I 100% just, that was really the first time I started using like all neutrals and did the creative process that I do now is really just kind of like dive in and figure it out while I'm there, especially on that base layer, and then add those yummy details in the end. I was terrified because I loved it so much right away. And I was like, "Ah, I think I'm done. (laughs) I was like, I love this so much. I don't know what I could possibly keep doing to it. Mm -hmm. And it was relatively simple, but it was peaceful. And that is really what I was trying to get across. And so I sent it to him and he's like, this is awesome. This is great. This is perfect. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Okay. I did it. Mm, That's awesome. (laughs) Dream client right there. Right. (laughs) It was so wonderful. And then to, you know, kind of make all things better. If they couldn't have already gotten better, there was a cherry on top when I put that on social media. And that was my first video to ever go viral. Yes. I remember us talking about that too. It was 
because that was my message. I was like, you know, when a client says do whatever you want and you just go for it. And so the fact that that's the first thing that went viral was something that literally came just from me. Like no one told me what to do. No one said how to do it. The fact that that was the first thing that got seen by, mm-hmm. I don't know, 4 million is really special to me. That's incredible. And I think to your point, the timing was perfect. Like that's what you were meant to do. I think not only for yourself, but for your client as well, being able to spread joy to others through your art, I think is so life-giving. Yeah. But- that's huge. That's huge. Mm-hmm. To me. I didn't know that when I started all of this, but it has yeah, become same. so important to me not only to give myself this, but I can hopefully give that to others who are just sitting, sitting at home, you know, scrolling. Like if I can give that moment of peace to someone else that I feel while I'm creating, I mean, this, this whole thing is just one beautiful cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree for sure. So if there was one like message you would want to give our listeners, what would it be? Hmm. I would say explore and create as much as you can, no matter what that is. If it's music, if it's art, if it's organizing, whatever makes you happy, I would say lean into that, explore that, try Mm -hmm. different variations of that. Don't stop Mm -hmm. until you figure out what it is that makes you, you. Yay. I love that. So where can people find you online? All right. Um, Find me on my website, juliawhitworth.com. But more importantly, I would follow my Instagram because I post there all the time, every day in our stories, keep in touch with me and what's coming up on juliawhitworth.art on Instagram and on TikTok and Facebook, all those, all those fabulous things all the places. And I will make sure that I link those in the show notes. So that is is easy for people to find you again. Thank you so much, Julia, for being here today. It has been such a pleasure learning about your creative journey and your creative process. Hooray. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun and can't wait to do it again. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Miss Julia Whitworth. Make sure to check the show notes at moniquecara.com forward slash show notes forward slash episode 002 for links to her website, all of her social links, and the link to her playlist that she mentioned while painting her fall collection last year. It's so fun to figure out an artist's inspiration and maybe it'll inspire you as well. I also wanted to let you know that since recording this episode, Julia's newest collection inspired by her most recent travels to the Oregon coast is now available. Additionally, be on the lookout for new prints coming soon and ornaments just in time for the holidays. And if I were to give you some homework this week, it'd be to explore, try something new, a new hobby perhaps, or just tinker in different ways in your respective creative outlet. By trying new things, you're opening yourself up for more because you were meant for more. Join me next week as I'm sitting down with abstract artist Marina Dunbar, who does these gorgeous, colorful sand paintings. You won't want to miss it, so make sure you subscribe. Talk to you then. If you love the show, could you do me two quick favors? First, take a screenshot of the podcast or a photo of where you're listening, post it to your stories, and tag me on Instagram. I'm at It's Monique Kara. I'm so excited to hear from you and I'll always share it with my audience as well. Also, if you're listening on Apple podcasts, can you take a second to leave a quick five-star review? This helps us find more amazing humans like you and your support in these two things truly means the world to me. Thank you so, so much in advance for your kind words. Talk soon.